Uh, hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this Grasshopper uh, tutorial, I want to show you how you can use uh, this Parametric Cup uh, cluster in Grasshopper. Uh, actually, we can design a Parametric Cup easily by defining the height, the radius, and for example, the handle start or end. some deformation we want here and at the end we can convert that into a mesh so if i double click on this create mesh to true and uh, bake this mesh in rhino you can see that i can produce this uh, handle here there is also a cutting uh, plane so if i put this to false and uh, difference from top and uh, decrease that and then put this create mesh to true can convert that into a single mesh so this is going to be the final results and you can use that in your project maybe you want to fabricate this you can see at the top it's completely flat uh, you can download this parametric cup from our website I'm also going to uh, explain uh, the step-by-step -step, uh, process we have uh, used to produce this parametric cup uh, with a tutorial uh, let's go to the inputs and talk about that the first one is the height uh, which is going to be the height of the circles we have used for the parametric cup. So if I change that, you can see that this is going to change the cup. Remember that this, uh, these numbers have to be increased as we go forward. So if I decrease that, you can see it's going to break the cup. So uh, this is going to be the height of the circles and this is going to be the radius of the circles. Uh, there is also a handle flip. So for example, if you change that and the handle goes inwards you can just flip this to make it outwards uh, another thing that you can uh, change is the number of the radius and heights so if i double click this uh, uh, gene pool and increase it to four uh, remember that this height has to be increased step by step and also for the radius make it four you can see that i can actually design a complete new cup here. You can just change the heights. And uh, also if you want to flip the handle you can flip it inwards or outwards remember that and there is also a thickness we can control here and then we're going to convert that into a mesh. Uh, okay let's go back to three height and radiuses. Uh, the cup thickness is controllable here so I can change this number slider and you can see it here. There is a handle start and end. So the handle start and end is a number slider. We can uh, change the location of the handle. As you can see here, I can change that from the top and the bottom. Uh, there is a handle radius, which I can change here. Uh, there is a handle deformation, which is the deformation of the handle. You can just uh, play around with this one. Uh, remember that you can double click this or uh, and increase or decrease that so that's also doable. And uh, don't put this to one because it's going to actually have some errors so just in decrease that slightly down and that is going to cut your cup uh, from the top and then you can finally just create the mesh. So I'm going to put this to true and at the end I can get the output from the parametric cup as a mesh and that's how I can produce the cup. So remember that when you flip back to create mesh to false, just turn this uh, on so you can see the preview contents and you can just play around faster uh, with the handles, the radius, the uh, height, uh, the flipping of the handle, the profile we want here maybe, we just want to make that inside and uh, also I can just make this a little bit and then just simply create the mesh and when you create the mesh if you want to see the mesh turn off the preview and you can see that mesh easily uh, okay for the algorithm let me explain this step by step uh, the first part is really easy to understand because it's a series of circles uh, we have defined the, the height by defining a construct point and giving it to the z so that is going to control the height and then also the radius which we can change here uh, if you want to increase or decrease that you can simply uh, double click and increase the number of counts for the gene pool uh, the next part is lofting these together so we produce this loft let's just decrease the radius a little bit at the bottom 
Uh, and now that we have the surface, we can cap it. So when you cap it, it's uh, obviously going to give you a complete solid. Uh, after, uh, after producing the cap, uh, we can delete one of the faces using the Pufferfish plugin. Uh, Pufferfish uh, surface and there is a shell polysurface component. You just give that to the solid. Uh, the face you want to remove is going to be one. If you want to see that, you can just uh, make uh, go to the surface deconstruct B rep and find the area of the faces. I usually use this display point list and bake it. So here you can see it's actually one is going to be the face we want to delete. So you just give that one to the removal and the thickness. If I turn this on, you can see that this is going to give you the complete thickness. And if I bake that, we have the initial cup with the thickness we want uh, in Grasshopper. Uh, the next part is to uh, go uh, and make the handle. So what I have done here is extracted the B-Rep wireframe of the solid uh, before we make the shell poly surface. It's not really that important, but as you can see here, it gives us uh, three different uh, wireframes, the top circle, the bottom circle, and the seam. We just have selected the seam here. so. This is going to select the seam, and then we can uh, select the part of it by using a subcurve. Uh, for the subcurve, we have reparameterized it between zero and one, and then we can just give a number slider for the start uh, and the end. Uh, obviously, this is going to control the start part here. You can see that here, and the end is between zero and one. And after uh, extracting the part we want to produce the handle, uh, we just have to make a series of perpendicular frames. Uh, let me make that plane size a little bit smaller. You can find it in the curve perpendicular frames. And uh, you can move those points uh, in the X direction. So if I uh, want to also have a flipping plane because we, uh, for example, when we make the handle, if it's inside, we want to flip that. Uh, I have added uh, additional uh, vector plane flip to that. And as you can see here, by just hitting the true false for the reverse X, it's going to reverse the X direction. And that is going to help us to design in the two different directions we want. Okay, then we can deconstruct the plane and use the X direction to move those points. So that's a simple movement. Uh, let me turn off everything. And now you can see that we can give a series of number sliders. If you want the start and the end to stick to the top and the bottom of the boundary, you can give it a zero. So let's just uh, put that to zero and one if you want to just have the whole scene. Uh, okay, after producing the points, we can interpolate that and produce the handle curve. Remember that again, you can just change that here easily and flipping this, it's going to go inwards or outwards. Uh, okay, after we produce the curve for the handle, and we also have the solid here, uh, we're going to use the Dendro plugin to produce it. Before we go forward, I have made a switch here, which is uh, create a mesh uh, true or false. Uh, I have used it for the handle here. Uh, one of the call patterns is false and one is true because uh, I want to show them in the uh, in this part. So I have made a switch here. Uh, also, there is a part that we have used the solid. So this switch is going to just say if we want a part of it uh, to go to the mesh process or not. Okay, this is going to be false here. So if it's false, it's going to go to the upper part. Uh, of the algorithm. Uh, we have a bounding box. Uh, I've scaled that two times in the X direction and Y direction because I wanted to move that bounding box uh, upwards. So I have extracted the B-Rep wireframe, picked up this edge, the number eight, and use that to move that up. So that is going to be a number slider. Difference from top from zero to one, which you can move that box here. Uh, then we will have, uh, because we want to make this a really fast uh, a preview, we just made a solid difference uh, from the uh, solid of the cup. And there's also a pipe, just a simple pipe to make that handle some preview. And then we have the solid difference. So before we make the mesh, this is going to be uh, the easiest way you can control the bounding box. 
and remember that we have control over everything uh, okay because we want to go to the mesh part we just put this to true and let's ju jump down here and see what happens uh, we have used the dendro plugin to convert the curve into a mesh so I'm going to use this uh, mesh to volume to convert the cup to the mesh you can see it here and also uh, curve to volume we give the curve to the curve input the radius is going to be the radius of the mesh we have here so remember that's going to be the same as the pipe we used here okay anyway we're going to use the intersect volume union to make a unite of these two volumes and then we just uh, use the volume to mesh for the setting remember that the voxel size has to be smaller uh, then the radius so just play around with this number and adaptivity, uh, adaptivity is zero so it makes uh, just a simple mesh from that so here you can see that this is going to uh, give you the base mesh uh, for the results uh, okay after we produce the dendro mesh we can give it to a quadri mesh uh, for the quadri mesh uh, I have used the setting you can find it here in the mesh triangulation quadri mesh and the quadri mesh setting you can just give it to the setting input uh, I have used 2000 uh, let's just hit control M or you can go to display preview mesh edges and let's give this a custom preview so you can see that okay that is going to be the quadri mesh uh, increasing or decreasing that is going to give you less or more of that quad faces also there's a symmetry here symmetry axis so as you can see here I've used the x-axis as the symmetry because we produce those circles around the x-axis so that's also going to give us a smooth result okay uh, after producing the quadri mesh uh, again uh, that's technique for the scale non uniform the box moving up and down is going to be used and then you can use the simple mesh difference which is the difference between the bounding box and the cup uh, to produce the final results and you can just bake that if you want to get the final results that's going to give you a good uh, quad mesh for the cup uh, I hope that this tutorial was useful if you have any questions just ask below this lesson and see you next time bye